And life is worth 
I can face tomorrow Oh, because he lives All fear, all fear Is chapter 12 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 the Bible says my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness let us pray our heavenly father will come to the service into your hands come and minister Lord Father and have your own way speak to your people in a special way encourage father and help us to rise to new levels and new dimensions in your, knowing you Lord Father and worshipping you better and having a closer walk with you we come to the service into your hands anoint and equip and direct in Jesus name Amen right you may be seated the Bible here Paul was facing a situation, a very thorny situation that, that he says, a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan was buffeting him. He, then he prayed three times to God. You know, Apostle Paul had done special miracles that by him, great things were done, great miracles that were written in the book of Acts. But here he is facing a situation where he shows that he failed to get an answer three times. He came to God and God just said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So we see that God sometimes allows failures for a reason. He allows us not to get what we want sometimes because he has something better for us. So he says, my grace is made uh, sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So he had a thorn in the flesh. Um, our prophet shows that it was the eye problem and Paul actually in Galatians I think chapter 4 says that uh, he shows that he has that eye problem and um, he says also the, there was a message of Satan maybe other things were the memories of how he, he persecuted the church other things were also maybe it was a person that kept persecuting him that was a, a messenger of Satan so there were many things that were pricking him and he was having that discomfort and why did God not remove this unpleasant situation? Why did he allow Paul to test failures? Because God allows failures in our lives. We, they are no failures in Christ. When we are in him, there is no failure. But in our own space, God allows failures to humble us so that we can know that without him, we are not sufficient. The prophet, I was listening to the message today that perfect strength by perfect weakness that we find strength in him when we see that we are not sufficient in ourselves. So God allows moments that will cause us to depend on him because when you are sufficient, you forget God. Your money is covering things. Your health is okay. Everything, you can almost live without God. So God allows situations that will humble you and make you more dependent on him. So when you are passing through the fire, the Bible says more precious than gold is the, is the trial of your faith. That, that, that when you are tried, when patience is yet, it's work, you become perfect. So God allows situations that will build your character. And in that refiner's fire, his eye is on you. He's not going to allow something bigger than what you can handle. He's not going to allow something that is uncommon to man. The Bible actually says in Micah chapter 7 verse 8 that um, don't rejoice over me, my enemy, 
For when I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, it shall be my light. So the thing about a believer is that every mistake, you must rise. Whether it's a failure in your health, you must bounce back. Whether it's a failure in your spiritual heights, you must bounce back. Whether it's a failure in a certain levels in marriage, you must never allow it to continue, but you must rise because the, the righteous falls seven times but rises. The Bible says, it shows in Psalms 124 that, that if, it is not the, if it was not the Lord who was on our side, when our enemies uh, were attacked us, they would have consumed us when their wrath was kindled against us. So if the Lord is with us, there is no failure in us. If you want to see success and good things, dwell in the presence of God all the days of your life. Live your life run and governed by the word of God. So when Peter was looking at Christ, he was successfully walking on the waters. The waters that he failed to manage when the storm was on, he was now working on his failures actually. But when he looked at the waves, he started to sing. So you must always focus on Christ. The Bible shows that Christ, God will never fail. I says, I will never fail you, nor abandon you. God will never fail you, even when you think you are alone, even when things seem like they are collapsing. There is a great program bigger than your knowledge that God is working all things together for good. So you look at the people that God uses, that uh, Jacob was a cheater, Peter had a temper, um, David had an affair, Noah got drunk. All of them failed somewhere. If you hear someone who says, I've never failed, they are failing there, they are lying. They are actually failing at that moment. Because all the people that we look up to, they had moments that humbled them. Even when you look at the foundation of the masterpiece of God, when you look at uh, Abraham, when we, the Bible says he stuck at not, there are moments where he actually laughed and you could not believe. That, that, that the child was coming. You look at Jacob, he had his own issues. Uh, Isaac also laughed. Joseph was almost perfect until the day where he lied to Pharaoh, say, don't say you are, we are shepherds. And no, God had to allow that moment just to humble him also. So Moses, he had failed for eight years. Then God attracts him with the burning bush. He wanted him not to lean on his wisdom, to lean on his understanding. So when I went to Egypt there, I went to see that burning bush, what is called the burning bush. They say it has no source of water, but it's still alive even up to now. So God is able to fix you. When you have failed and you bring all your broken pieces to God, God can pick all the pieces. God uses broken vessels. No matter how broken you are, God will never throw you away, but you will say, come unto me, all those who labor, and I have not any, even if you are broken, God can still use you. We, we fall, we break, we fail, but then we rise, we heal, we overcome. Whatever has brought you down, don't allow it to keep you down. As a daughter of God, whatever, whether it's depression, it's worries, rise immediately, find the word of God and rise by the word of God. So the strongest hearts have the most scars. So the people that you see and you respect have their own battles and they also fail. So someone, a basketballer, say that uh, I missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I lost more than 300 games. And 26 times I've, uh, uh, I've been trusted to make the game winning shot, but I missed. I've never, this is one of the best people talking about his failures. So many people won't show you their failures, but that's what makes many of us. We will learn from your failures. I want you today to look, look at your failures and start learning from them and saying, I will rise. I've learned by how I failed to achieve this that I can now achieve through the knowledge I got from how I failed. So when we give our reports of how the missionary work went, it shows as if it was we're just guiding and having no failures. When we opened the church in Jobek, we actually would go every weekend. I would send maybe eight people and they won't be there but we would find four people in that job at church. But persistently every week, spending uh, thousands of dollars, we said we are not going to fail even if there is one person. We're going to go from 2013 up to date. We have never failed to have preachers there. That's why the church has grown. The church has been successful. Here at City Tepaneku, those who are, who are ministers in the Monday meeting, they know that we once sat in that corner as we decided to close this church. It was failing. 
we were not having converts all the way to 2015. That's when we started having um, good converts here. We were banking. We were having afternoon services. So people would come from Pumula. So we learned from our failures. When we sat there and Brother says, just close. It's a failure. And uh, uh, maybe let's go to Evelyn in a classroom where there are no expenses. I said, no. We have learned from our failures. We're going to take strategies to make sure we are successful. When I was a young boy, uh, I tried many times in Christianity and it was not working for me in that I was not outright in sin and I was not outright in Christianity. At one time I actually thought maybe I'm that soil that is in the, among the thorns. Maybe I'm that soil that is among the rocks. So I thought maybe that's why I'm failing to hold. But when I met the message of the hour, I realized that when God finds a stony heart or a heart that is uh, among the thorns, he doesn't patch it up and what? He just removes that old heart and gives you a new heart. So whatever past was, God makes it all different. Uh, when I started preaching uh, uh, at Queen's Park there, this is one of my first sermons in uh, 2009. So I, I, I never was able to preach in English. So I would try during the service. Well, this service actually that I'm showing here, I went bold. I think Brother Isa and some of them were there. They know that service. I went bold and said, today I'll preach in English. English left me at the pulpit. I called Polycarp. I changed the interpreter to interpret to Shona. I was preaching in Debel. I felt discouraged, but the next service I tried English. Until now I'm preaching in English. So we all have failures, but we have to learn from our failures. You must never allow yourself to be down. When Napoleon had a dramist, a drama was um, when the battle was hot, they told him sound retreat. He says I was never taught to sound retreat. Actually, when we went to Waterloo to see the place where they were finally conquered, it's shaped like a drum, the building, because the, this drama said, I will never, I'm not taught to sound retreat. Whatever you're facing, there is no giving up. There is no quitting. Quitters will never win, and winners will never quit. Let me say this. If you are walking in the light of fellowship with God, with his people, and with the Holy Spirit upon you, you will meet obstacles right in your path of duty. Don't stop. Just keep pressing on. God will make a way through it. So whatever you are facing, you, you may be shackled by every burden now, but God will make a way. I was showing you that Abraham Lincoln in a series of failures. And this is what makes his CV so big, because how, how he overcame this, yeah, all these setbacks after losing the job, being defeated, uh, lo lo losing I think about 13 times or so, but finally he became one of the best presidents. And he said, success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. If you fail once, you keep going because you are now a step closer to your success. He says the best way to predict the future is to create it. You pray, you speak your future into existence. Then the, the prophet says, if you fail, you fail by yourself. You, 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 you just get away from the word. But as long as you stay with the word, it can fail. So there are moments where we sway from the word. Those are moments where we have bitter lessons of failure. You see, when we, God is with you, when the word is with you, it will stand with you. It will never fail. In the land's den, it will never fail. In the fire furnace, it will never fail. When you are passing through the waters, when you are passing through the floods, it will never fail. Even heaven and earth will pass away. Your situation, your circumstances will pass away, but the word will never fail. But what makes us fail is when we are in sin. Because there you have moved away from God. You are now, you have limited yourself. God is unlimited. His word is unlimited. He has given us exceedingly great precious promises that by those we cannot favor, uh, fail. So don't allow sin to catch you. Don't allow sin to limit you. Confess it under the blood of Jesus Christ and rise and fight again. The reason why the devil is attacking you, why he's after you, is because you are an elected somebody. Because you won't waste energy on someone that is on his camp. When you are broken, you still are a child of God. Your brokenness does not disqualify you 
from being a daughter of God. No matter how broken you are, God can pick those pieces and make masterpieces from that. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 34 that out of weakness, they were made strong. Out of your experiences, the trauma, the failures, the predicaments that you have been, the squeezes that you have been, even the crisis that you are in, God sometimes uses a crisis to make us closer to him because sometimes complacency comes and we are at ease in Zion but God brings a crisis that no friend can rescue you from your own fans cannot help you nothing can help you then through that crisis you then say I look up to the mountains from whence cometh my help my help comes from the Lord so you must learn from your failures from your mistakes your mistakes and your failures they don't shape you but you can rise and fight again Joshua was told that don't be dismayed and, uh, because God is going to make a way. You shall prosper with so far you go. Someone said some of the best lessons that we ever learn from our, uh, 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 from our mistakes. Uh, the error of the past is the wisdom and success of the future. The way we failed in what we're trying to do. I want to say even to those who are still trying to overcome some things and they are failing, keep pressing one day you shall see your victory keep pressing like samson who said one small lord one small lord and then that day you had a greater victory than all other days don't give up that i've been trying this and it's failed i've been trying to quit this and when you receive the holy ghost what you are trying to quit who quit you we learn from our failures when the prophet went ahead of the vision of God, you are supposed to be seeing that grandmother in the, in the vision wiping her glasses. But at that time, he went ahead and prayed for the child. And that, that was a terrible failure. And he learned right there to say, I must never go ahead of the vision of God. Someone was almost going to die because of his uh, mistake. But he learned there. When he came to South Africa, he was told, go to South Africa, but you pay for it. He learned when even the closest and good friend, uh, Bosworth, told him, Papa saw a vision and was told that you don't have to go now to Deppen and other places now. But then it was so contrary to the other ministers and their inspiration until even F.F. Bosworth says, Brother Pranam, this time you are wrong. He heard it from Bosworth that this time you are wrong. So he, he had to compromise, but from the losses and the mistakes, he learned that there is no room to compromise on the word of God. From that failure, you know, when we look at Brabram, we see someone who just speaks things that pull, but Brabram had failures. Elijah had failures. Every man of God had failures. All of us had failures, but how they rose from those failures some of the failures it took god himself to stop the failure because there was a time when he, he had enough he actually went to touch a very high voltage line if it was not god that was going to be the end god will not allow you to fail you allow failures that bring lessons not failures that bring uh, that bring disrepute to the gospel you not allow your failure to give the enemy mileage, but your failures to give you mileage. So anytime you take things upon yourself, you leave God out and you are going to be a failure. That's how we fail. But every time when you find that there are failures, check. Maybe you have a Babylonian garment because when Israel was told, no one shall stand before you. You shall not fail in any way. When they started failing against a small nation like I, they started checking their Babylonian that who, who, why is there sin in the camp? Then when they sorted that, they were back to winning ways. They went to I and defeated it again. After checking your life, after making right, after confessing, after receiving the Holy Ghost, after making right with God and taking at his word, go back and overcome again. I was preaching somewhere. Um, then I, I gave a testimony of someone whose visa was rejected and then they tried again. Uh, same documents. I think Sister Esther also the secretary was listening. She just heard that and sent back the same documents that were rejected. She got a UK visa. So sometimes God, when he sees that you trust yourself in your area of strength, he just wants to come in by showing you that with him, without him you can fail. In the message, the guide, the prophet knew the woods. 
He knew that he could not be lost. So he hanged that animal and went and says, I know the woods. And that was his profession. He had never messed up that way. But that day, God took him around in a death walk. He kept seeing that same animal running around until he says, Lord, help me. And then that's when the problem ended. The, the, God wants to sh you to acknowledge him in every part. Peter was a fisherman. That was his profession. But he toiled all night and caught nothing. He had to fail in his profession. In what he was doing all that time before he was a Christian, he was doing it so well, even every time. But he says, now I fail, but a thy word. Now when he was trusting the word of God, he caught more than he ever caught since he was a fisherman. So with God, when he's on your side, when you are tired, when you are failing, you will carry, uh, you will carry you. And you will see two sets of footprints, not four sets of footprints, because you will take care of you. You will never allow. With Christ, we can never fail. Let me tell you that with Christ, when Jesus, you are holding to his hand, when you are with Jesus, you, you, are, with, you are with the mature, majority. Every master was once a beginner. Never be afraid to try again. If you don't be embarrassed to that, what if I mess up? Some people are, have good voices to sing, but they have never tried because they are afraid that what if I do this God? What if I fail to preach right? Try and God will pick you from there. And then you will see. If you try and try and then see that is not your field, you, you, you have not failed. You have been successful to know that is not your field. So success is not achieved by never failing, but by rising every time you fall. Every time you feel down, don't, don't look for a pity part where people come and, and, and just brush me and say, oh, sorry, brother. No, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that is the extra mile effort. Try again and go an extra mile. All of us won't be working if we're afraid of falling when we're babies. In order to succeed, your, your desire for success should be greater than the fear for failure. So, success is not determined by how many times you fall, but how many times you rise and try again. Success is not for a chosen few, but for those who are willing to try again and again and again. Whatever you are determined to do, God will make a way for you to do it. The only failure is the failure to try again. Otherwise, if you keep trying, you shall arrive where you are aiming to arrive. Don't give up just because you had a bad day or a setback. Dust yourself off and try again. You shall bounce back. You shall win again. If you try in business and it fails, just come back when you, and say, Lord, where did I fail? And God will help you. You learn from that. If as a parent, we have blunders as parents, as, as a teachers, as ministers, we have blunders, but we keep overcoming. Even the apostle Peter, he failed many times. One time out of temper, he cut someone's ear. And one time again, the cocker to remind him that you have failed, Mr. Peter. So some situations keep reminding you that you are a failure, but he, he ran and, and suited it that same day. And God did to give him even the keys to say, Simon, if you love me, feed my brethren. He had gone for fishing many times. Even Elijah, the great prophet Elijah, who could stop the rains, he, after a great victory, killing 400 prophets of power, the next day was on the juniper tree, showing that even after your greatest achievement, there is a human element that you must guard. Even uh, the prophet uh, Paul, immediately after being stoned and he was down, he was in the heaven, in the third heaven. When he came from the third heaven, he found a messenger of Satan. Because why was the message of Satan sent? It was so that he does not exalt himself. So that he will remain humble. There are things, if you don't humble yourself, God has something that he would use to keep you humble on the straight and narrow. So, that messenger of Satan, God, you know, there was a messenger of Satan. He says, there was given me. Given by who? Given by God. And him. 
So we see that this prophet says that it was in the darkest hour of the woman with the blood issue. She had failed. She has used, she has used her money and everything, but nothing was getting right. Uh, she had spent all her money, then Jesus came along. It was in the darkest, darkest hour for Shatrik, Bishak, and Abednego, um, then Jesus came along. It was in the darkest hour for Jairus than ever, um, when the little daughter, 12 years old, had died. Then Jesus came along. It was in the darkest hour that the old blind Bartimaeus had ever seen there. Then Jesus came along. So when you're at your darkest hour, look up to God. Learn to trust him in all your ways. Acknowledge him, prioritize him, uh, put him first in everything. God's word will triumph. It will never fail. There, there is where every Christian ought to stand. When you hear a mother where it says, Many miscarriages. I was just seeing this online. It's not one of our testimonies. Um, someone gave me a testimony. The other one was saying, after 10 miscarriages, I'm carrying my baby. So, they were not going to carry that baby if they were discouraged by one mishap. As traumatic, as tough as it was, they kept saying, we shall have our child. I was seeing actually uh, on, online also a mother with 70 years having their first child. They tried all that time, but they said, I will never die without a child. So uh, I saw this picture of this baby who was carrying, carrying an IUD, a contraceptive that was supposed to stop them from being um, born. But when they were born, their hand was gripping it, showing that against all odds. Of course, I don't know if it's medically correct or what some things are just done on, online. So the prophet says that it's told that um, there's this man who went to, uh, to a company and was going to get a job. So when he, he, they said, sign your, your, your name there, and then his pencil had no eraser. They told them that, bring your pencil with the eraser. But he, he had no eraser. They said, why don't you have an eraser? He says, I don't know, make any mistake. They said, ah, then we don't want you here. We, we want people who make mistakes and correct them. Because you can't employ someone who doesn't make a mistake. That would be a mistake that you'll be making there. He, he talks about how we defy the odds. Shamka with the ox court. Yet ran away many times from the Midianites, from the Philistines. But when he said enough is enough, he came with that ox court and said uh, enough is enough. Uh, though the odds were against him, he stood against all those and he, he destroyed them. No matter how many times I fail, I shall rise. If, even if you have come prayer line after prayer line and it seems you are not healed, you must say, my healing is coming. That is how Grace Weeper got the answer. Even after that, say the Lord, you are not going to be healed. She says, I, I know my Lord will make a way. I know my Lord is a healer. That's how that persistence will pay off. No matter what storms you are facing, no matter what fire and rain is falling out against you, you must know that you must never give up. You shall come out of your situation. God will come even in the deeper levels of your problem to carry you. You must make sure that your anchor is holding. You must make sure that as long as you are standing on the promises of God, you are afloat. You will never sink. The word of God will make a way for you. There is no way you shall fail when you are following the footsteps of the word of God and your faith will never fail. Faith knows not defeat. If you quit, it means it was not faith, it was hope. Or it was intellectual faith. But when you come to God, commit all your failures, all your depression, all your anger, all your addictions, all your losses, all your broken hearts, all your hurt, all your betrayals, all your confusion, everything, all your burden, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. When you see successful people, you don't see, you only see there's a, the tip of the iceberg. Otherwise, underneath there is hard work, persistence, not giving up, sacrifices, discipleship. Risks. So you must know that if you want to get somewhere with God, don't quit. Uh, and you get up now when you are down. I was seeing this testimony that my brother sent just um, uh, in the, around four today that when you had a, a urethra stone, God just made it to pass without operation by the power of prayer and just um, simple medical intervention without any surgery, but by the power of faith. So, in the presence of Haman, Mordecai was promoted. In the presence of Penina, Hannah ate a child. In the presence of Pharaoh, 
the exodus happened in the presence of Tobias and Sanballat, the walls of Jericho as, of Jerusalem were, were built, rebuilt. In the presence of the dragon in Revelation chapter 12, the man child was born. In the presence of the alligators in Nile River, Moses' basket sailed through. In the presence of uh, over flooded Jordan, the children of Israel crossed over. In the presence of hungry lions, Daniel's faith overcame. In the presence of the hot flames or oh, the fiery furnace, uh, the Hebrew boys overcame. In the presence of hot boiling oil, John's faith prevailed. Your challenges are not your excuses. You must say whatever, whether economic pressures, whether no one in our family ever made it, whether I've tried this and failed, you must say somehow God will make a way for me to overcome. So we read in Exodus chapter 14 verse 10 that when Pharaoh drew nigh to the children of Israel, um, they, they, they saw the Egyptians and they started uh, crying to Moses that why did you take us from Egypt? Why did we, were there no graves there for us to die there? And Moses, I wanted to read the Bible clearly here. If you read here from verse 10, they are crying to Moses. And you don't find one scripture in chapter 14 where Moses was crying. You, you, you check Moses' response. They cried to Moses. They said, why did you do it? We had graves in Egypt. Moses' response, he did not cry. He just says, Moses said unto them, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of God, which he will show you this day. Um, for the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your, feet, your, your pits. He actually says, the Lord will fight for you, only be still. But God then responds to the words of Moses. Moses is like a preacher who is seeing that things are tough. He says, we don't care what the economy is. We don't care what you are passing through. Jehovah Jireh is here. He's just telling the people that don't give up. But when God answers Moses, he says, Moses, why cry? Speak to the children of Israel. So, with all Moses was telling people, don't give up, his heart was crying. He was also, because God answers the heart of Moses, Moses was speaking like a saying, no brothers, we will make it. We shall build our churches. This year shall be a great year. This year things shall move. But in his heart, he was saying, yeah, it's tough. And God says, no Moses, you are crying even if you are speaking in faith. Some of you are crying even if you are speaking in faith. But God is saying, don't cry. Speak the word. Whatever you are facing, whatever challenge, don't give way. Don't give. So they, they had to walk on dry ground. It's another miracle because they were not on wet ground, but it's a, on dry ground when they walked. And the Pharaoh's armies could not test that miracle. Your miracle is for you. Demons cannot test it. They drowned in that miracle. So God made a way. It's always in that weakest moment when it looks like the true message is about to be defeated. Then God steps in. When you hold on, those that believe in God shall never be ashamed. God knows your deadlines. God knows when it's now a heads. He knows when there is so much pressure. He knows how much you can bear. He knows your tears, your heartaches, the number of your hair. He knows what you are passing through. At that moment when you are almost getting ashamed, scriptures cannot be broken. Those that believe in God shall not be ashamed. So God allows failures in the life of Jacob so that when he sees an opportunity again to rest with the, with the angel of God, you will rest with the angel. You will say, I will never leave. You now know the value of the presence of God because you now know the value of coming to church because you are not in church during COVID time. See, um, that, that, that's not a good thing to tramp upon God's people. You hate him when you do so. So God had commissioned Moses. His failures meant nothing. So Moses had failures. He, he tried to give five excuses before God. But God removed all those excuses. So you have no excuse that can stand before God. Do you know even Elijah, as great as he was, a man who did not die, a man who went in chariots of fire in the whirlwind, he, the, the situation, even Elijah had such a situation, where the, um, you, you, you would pray seven times, not getting, he did not say, when he prayed and said, go and check, he was thinking there is an answer. Then the boy came and said, there's nothing up there. He did not say, ah, well, let's change. Maybe let's pray for, for maybe to find a river somewhere. <laughs> because water is not coming. He kept saying, no, go back. I'll pray. Go back. I'll pray. Go back. The bank balance.
accounts will change. Go back, the account balance will change. Go back, things will change. No, go back, the atmosphere will change. Go back, the results will come. Up to the seventh time, that's when one time he, it was, I think it's Elijah who, who sent Gehazi. He, when he sent him with his staff, he thought that staff would touch the baby and the baby would rise. It did not happen. He, he thought it would happen that way, but they touched the baby and nothing happened. So he started in the room. He prayed and walked around. There was nothing. And then I think he did it maybe about seven times. Then the child started sneezing. He was not going to stop until there's results. We're not going to stop in our faith declarations. We're not going to be discouraged by anything that the devil throws. We're not going to be discouraged by what someone says. We're not going to be discouraged by our own failures. Our own failures mean we're almost there. Without, you cannot do anything without failing and rising again. So here's a quote from the prophet. It says, the reason Moses failed in the first place um, it was the lack of having the burning bush. So when we go without God, um, that, that, that's our failure today, is the lack of the Holy Spirit. We need to learn how to hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We need to learn that when I thought it's the Holy Ghost, was it the Holy Ghost? We need to learn that when I thought that dream was from God, by those failures, you start knowing that not every thought that you say God said it is God. You, you know that mm, I need to catch it uh, twice or thrice in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So you see, I wonder many times, I get so discouraged myself. I wonder if my wife can, how, how my wife can put up with me. Um, I go around and after a meeting, I'm so moody. I cry for a little while. I'm a total failure. This is Brother Bram saying that in one time he was saying, I'm a melancholy. Every one of us faces juniper moments. You face those moments where you feel discouraged. But by that you rise against all odds. You know, what God has said for your life cannot be defeated. If God has a purpose in your life, if they want you to die, you're not going to die. When it looks like it's impossible, when the odds is against you, when it seems like it's permanently against you, the creator of the universe will make a way for your life to come through. For your vision, it shall not fail, it shall speak. What you are believing, though 10,000 fall by your right hand side, it shall not come nigh to you. Where there is a purpose, you will never die until that purpose is fulfilled. So, defying the odds is not just an act, it's a, it's a mindset. It must be new that though all hell assail me, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give away what I have. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to stand on Christ, the solid rock, or other ground is seeking sand. That's why we sing that song, that Tinoyambuka, Vavengi Varipo. It means in the presence, God did not remove the Red Sea. He did not remove the fire. He did not remove the chariots. He had to, while they were there, God had to make them overcome. He had to have them speak what they want done. So God allows certain situations to look at you. Then he prepares a table in the presence of those situations. So success is sweeter when achieved against all odds. Um, you, you don't give up even when the odds are against you. The impossible only exists until someone achieves it. So never ask, underestimate the power of a determined soul striving against all odds in the face of adversity to conquer all the odds. When the odds are against you, that's when you know you're in the right path. The impossibilities become possibilities. The biggest achievements in life are often a result of overcoming insurmountable odds. The, what makes you a warrior is how much challenges you have wrestled with and overcome. God is not just going to pick you and put you there and clap hands that you have overcome. He has trusted you with power and virtues to pull through that situation. When you are determined to succeed, even when the heaviest odds will crumble against you, all your enemies shall crumble at your feet against all odds. Fight for what you believe. It doesn't matter what you are passing through. God teaches you to be desperate. When you want something and it's a matter of life and death, then every problem becomes an opportunity to build character. God allows those zigzag moments when David is, is defeated and people want to stone him. Then he rises and he pursues and recovers everything 
that the enemy um, stole from him. When you have taken courage and say, I'm not going to give up everything that you lost financially, spiritually, in life, whatever, in business, God will bring it back to you. So, one time our prophet was so discouraged. Look at what others have achieved. Look at Oral Roberts University there. And you are saying, look me, I've only an old typewriter that is there. God says, don't worry. A voice says, I'm your everlasting portion. Don't be discouraged when you look at others with their land of gold. When you look at others prospering. Your time will come and when your season comes, it's going to be worth the wait. So, um, there is a time where you wait. There's a time where you are tested and the inspector is checking, saying, I've put him down, I've stormed him, I, I, I've turned everyone against him, and he, he still comes up again. I've made him sick, I've done this, I've thrown him in a hospital, I've took him out there and, and, and done this and done this, I've turned his wife against him, I've turned his neighbor against him, and still, he says, though he slays me, I will trust him. Never give up whatever happens in your life. Um, Abraham stuck at not at the promise of God. The longer it took, he trusted God more, knowing that he that promised was more than able to fulfill the promise. Jabez was born in sorrow. That is a negative background. You must not give excuses about your background, about where you are born and say, oh, if I was like so and so who came from a rich family, Jabez was born in sorrow. But he says, oh Lord, if you would bless me indeed and enlarge my course and that thine hand must be with me and keep me from evil that it will not torment me and God granted him. We see people like even um, Rosella. She was an alcoholic. She was an addict. But when she came before the presence of God not making excuse, something happened. God turns tables for those that believe in him. We see the prophet starting from a log cabin and this is where he is now flying around the world seven times. I was showing the picture of Brother Maduka when he was still um, before grace came in. Um, maybe amazing grace but it was maybe a certain level of grace. Then how he is when God, I was showing Tungarara's picture also when he is having his voice but he sent me his picture before grace. This is his picture there. You can see who he is there. How God moves things. God is able to turn your battles into blessings. If you don't give up and you say every pattern will become a blessing, the impossibles will become possible. So you don't give excuses. No more saying I'll do it tomorrow. No more parts, no more can'ts, no more it's too hard. You say I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Then by that attitude and mentality, your problem expires. Your situation expires. So God is a master in turning a crisis into opportunities. When there was a crisis in heaven and John was weeping, where he was weeping, he stood praising God until all nature had him praising God. When there is determination, you can achieve. As I'm fixing to close in the next five to ten minutes, when you are determined to do something, it doesn't matter how many times you have failed. You're going to push until it happens. You're going to pray until something happens. So, Failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. Success is a flavor if you had failed before. If your background was tough, when you take the vilest offender, when Paul says I was the chiefest of sinners, but now I'm, about, I'm the chiefest of apostles, that is a great um, flavor for success. So turning obstacles into opportunities. There was a time when uh, the American in, uh, uh, farmers in Alabama there, they lost a lot of their cotton because of this uh, ball weevil. But then it taught them that we should not give up. Let's diversify. We have failed in this line, but we're going to try other legumes, other plants. By that, they became so prosperous in agriculture. They did not quit because of their failures, but they said, they put this monument to say, in honor to the poor weaver, in honor to all the adversity in your life, to say thank God for the troubles, thank God for the mountains, thank God for all the adversity and the critics have met it. So people who are not successful in life, they carry failures above them and say I failed, my all ever failed in this, I failed to receive all because I failed to overcome this, I'm always failing um, in these habits, in these natures. But those who are successful say okay, how did I fail? 
And how can I rise? Let me rise. If I fall, Satan will never keep me down. Satan you can never lower me down. Unexpected storms may come. They can bring me low, but they cannot bring me down. I'm going to ride on the storms. I'm going to ride. Um, you remember that story that the prophet talks about of a man with a three-cornered stick. Every time the church will try to rise, you will beat down the church. So there are some things and failures that keep beating you down. But you must rise and say, Satan, I'm not going to be down anymore. But I'm going to rise now and forever. So you don't give excuses that in our family, no one is rich. In our family, no one worshiped God. In our family, no one had the Holy Spirit. In our family, there are satanic forces. There are wizards. There are witches. There are things that are against us. You have a power to step aside and say it ends here. I'm defining new trends. I'm defining new dimensions. I'm breaking new records as a son and daughter of God. With me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Where I step my foot, things will bloom. Where I step, things will be okay. You take matters of destiny and say, I'm not going to allow failure. I'm going to rise because in him there is no failure. I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature. There are new dimensions. This thing I do, I forget the things that are past and I press to the mark of the calling. When you build your hopes on things eternal, when you build on the hopes, on the word of God, you shall not be shaken. When you, you, you are like a man who has built his home on the rock because when the stones beat vehemently upon that house, it will never fail. But why we fail? We spend our time on things that drain us. We spend our times on worldly things. We spend our times on, on things. The Bible says that turn my eyes from worthless things. Now God allows you, my sister and my brother, to be between a rock and a hard place. He has determined every trial that you must face. He has trusted you that you shall come out of that situation. Not for you to cry pity party. You, you are able to say when my soul is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher. Your situation shall not crush you. God knows your deadline and he pays attention to detail. He knows that it will look like that deadline will reach but when that time comes he is swift like a mother eagle he is going to pick you to a higher realm your testimony shall be more beautiful because of the obstacles that try to indict because of the adversity your testimony shall be more real and so great to rescue another person who is in that predicament because you have endured but when you fail in the days of adversity your strength is small so in whatever you are passing through, hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold they know that with God there is no limit. There is no limit to the amount of power he can give you. There is no limit to the amount of blessings he can give you. There is no limit to the heights. Never put God in a box to say he's going to answer this way and that way. He's going to answer in a way that you don't know how. So this week, let God surprise you with the mighty visitations and mighty testimonies. Stay on the word of God and draw from El Shaddai and say my answer is coming. No matter how long it is taken, you failing to enter courtship, you going to press on until you enter your courtship. No matter how long it has taken before you enter your financial victory that you have spoken, before you even build your house that you have spoken, all what you have declared in faith, one day it shall be a celebration day. One day God will say, Cornelius, Cornelius, your prayers, you have come for a memorial before God. God remembers you. God knows exactly to, how to make it a beautiful thing for you. No more excuses, no more failures, no more victim mentality to say whatever stresses and disappointments, whatever things have tried to put you down, write on those things. One time there is a man who was trying to pull a log that was heavy, trying to transport it down the stream, but then the voice from heaven said, you are doing it the wrong way. It was Paul Ryder, I think, Paul Ryder. Then he says, push that log into the stream and write on it. So what he was struggling with, God said, you can ride on it. Your problems, your failures, you can ride on them. So Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. He also prayed, he also feared that mm, Jezebel would be fighting me. But God was always there for him. Angels were there to make sure that you will never fail. Listen, mothers, even if you have failed with your children, that child one day shall pass at their school. 
Even if it looks like that boy cannot receive the Holy Ghost, don't give up as a mother. Stay on your knees until good results come. Then the testimony of that boy shall help other boys who are bound in drugs, bound in mischief. Brother, even if you have failed in business and your wife doesn't even believe that you can ever do anything at home anymore, don't give up. Say, our Lord, I'm writing on the promise of God. I've tried many times. I've tried this and that. I was showing that man of Kentucky that when you had failed at 65 years, that's when he said, I can fry chicken. And he became a great rich man. As we stand to our feet, wherever you are failing, go back carrying the word of God and saying, Satan, move away from my space. I'm going to make it in this life. I'm going to live a holy life. I'm going to live a life that is in the purpose of God. I'm going to win souls. I'm going to overcome all natures. I'm going to overcome. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to allow the devil in my marriage. I'm not going to allow the devil in my dreams, in my thoughts. I'm not going to allow any elbow room for the devil because whatever happens, I came back my ground. I say, give it back, Satan. I'm not your property. There is no space where the devil is allowed to win in your life. There is no place where the devil is allowed to win any direction of your life. Claim it back and say, I'm a daughter of the king. Though many years, Satan tried to tempt us, but the army is rising now to say, give me your hand, let's agree together. We are more than conquerors. We are not negotiating victory. We are taking authority and speaking the word. The word that you spoke last year and did not materialize, you shall meet it one of these years. Your faith declaration that you spoke even five years ago did not die. You shall meet it in another office somewhere. You shall meet it in another promotion somewhere. You shall meet it in another happening. What you spoke in faith, just keep bringing it and say like Joshua and Caleb who says, give me my mountain that God spoke of in that day. What was spoken in the other services does not die. God is still in business of remembering his people. The angel of the Lord still visits homes. As I declare today, your home has not failed to host God. Your home has not failed in prayer meetings. You can rise and fight again. Your home has not failed in atmosphere. You, can, you still have the capacity as a son and daughter of God to live above all failures, to live above all limitations. Nothing shall limit me. Nothing shall hold me down. This old world can never hold me. I'm going to pull. I'm going to push. I'm going to press to the mark of the high calling. There is a high calling for every believer. God has no low callings. For you, sister, there is no average callings. There is a high calling for every son and daughter of God. If you look at the prophet, one time he prayed and prayed, and it seems like God was not healing him, but he wrote a stanza to say faith was not forgotten by the Father above. He sent his sign on the wings of a dove. You shall meet that dove one of these days in your prayer room. You shall meet that dove one of these days in your dreams. You shall meet that dove one of these days even now as we all pray to the Lord, our Heavenly Father. We take courage now to say we shall overcome. Joshua has told, you must be courageous. You shall divide an inheritance for these people. Don't move to the left or right, but stay true. So, Father, we say, keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There is a race I must, I'm not going to be tired until I hit the finish line. I'm not going to be tired until we reach the rapture line, until we reach the rapture express, until our bodies are changed. We're going to press on. There remains more ground to be possessed. We're not going to be discouraged by these situations. As Moses said, the Egyptians that you see, you shall see them no more. Moses was calling. He says, no people. Don't be discouraged. No people. Don't give up. Don't give in. And God says, Moses, you are crying though you are speaking in faith. You are crying though you are making declarations. Speak the word and go forward. I speak the word. Oh Lord, Father, heal your people today by your word. I speak the word for the restore what your people have lost by your word. Open new levels of opportunities. Open new levels. Bring back for all those lost opportunities. We are learning from our failures. Because when we failed, it's in those moments when we went ahead of our God. 
when we failed, it's in those moments when we're disconnected from the tapes and books. When we failed, it's in those moments when we trusted ourselves. But the Bible says, lean not on your understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord. You will bring it to pass. I know, Father, you will bring these things to pass. It's not our ability to make them happen. It's not Moses' ability to open the Red Sea, but Moses' ability is to speak and declare. Then the hand of Jehovah shall open the Red Sea. The hand of Jehovah shall open a way for those who are praying for visas, for those who are praying for courtship, for those who are praying for business, for those who are praying against their losses, for those who are praying against their failures, for those who are saying, enough is enough. I want to rise in the name of Jesus. I want to step on my failures. I want to walk on the waves like Peter. I'm going to focus on Jesus, the author and finish of my faith. Heavenly Father, we, are, we know you are searching for those who believe this evening. You are seeking such that will come unto you with an open heart and say, Lord, I'm shopping. Lord, I'm taking my portion. Lord, I shall not be give up. I know I've been looking for my house for a long time, but that house is coming. I've been looking for my squares for a long time, but they are coming. I've been looking for the salvation of my boys for a long time, but it's coming. I've been looking for my breakthrough for a long time, but this is the hour, this is the time we are the people. Satan, I command you, in the name of Jesus, release all those who are bound. Release all those who are getting discouraged. We shall not die, but we shall live to sing the praises of God. Give way, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You have no part in us. We have no part in you. Release all those. All what you are holding, all the funds that are held, let them be released. All the victories that are held, release you, Satan. I come against you, you family spirits, you evil spirits, you demonic forces. You have no power. We are not going to give you rest, Satan. We are going to keep you on the run. Release right now. Heavenly Father, you are a present help in time of need. You answer your people. You answer with fire. Let that fire come down. Let the Holy Ghost baptize everyone that is hungering and thirsting. Let the Holy Ghost visit everyone that has a need. No matter how many times they fail to receive the Holy Ghost, they must say, at thy word. At thy word. Though they have toiled all night, there is no room for giving up. We're going to reach heaven with all what belongs to us. We're not going to lose one thing, no string, no what. We're going to claim every blessing. I'm claiming mine, I'm claiming mine. I say, Lord Father, for those who are heavy hearted, for those who came here desperate, for those who are saying, Lord, please, hear my humble cry, do not pass me by. For those mothers and fathers, we have been praying for the same thing over and over. May they take courage that he that watches over Israel does not sleep or slumber. There is coming a day where they shall rejoice in the Lord. There is coming a day where they shall stand and testify. And that day is this day. That day is even now. Because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Have your own way this evening. Revive your people, Lord. There are some who have seen their brook cherished dry. What they were holding so dear was drying every time. Their little resources were drying every time. But God will make another way. He's going to open a way in the widow of Sarepath. He's going to make a new way for a new testimony, for a new level, for a new dimension, for a new supply. Father, we heard the testimony of how you healed our brother without surgery, with your two-edged sword, with the sword of your word. May you remove tumors today. May you touch your people. May you provide their needs. May you provide their desires. And we, as we end this service, Father, we are under expectation. We are not leaving this presence here. We are going this presence to our homes. We want this atmosphere in our homes. We want this atmosphere in our sanctuaries. We want this atmosphere in our businesses. We want this atmosphere wherever we go. Like Moses who says, don't allow your presence to leave us. We depend on you. Through it all. Through our failures. 
we have learned to trust in Jesus through our mistakes through our scars through our deficiencies through our blunders through our crisis through our predicaments we have learned that there is a God in heaven who governs in the affairs of the children of God we have learned that in all things there is an unseen hand that moves, that directs, that joins things. Whatever, Lord Father, we say against all odds, we shall prevail. Against all odds, we shall declare your works. Against all odds, we shall be blessed. We are blessed. No matter what happens, no matter what we face, no matter how many arrows from hell fly, we are blessed and too blessed to be stressed. We worship you, Father. And we honor your holy name. We feel our spirits charged and fired up to say yes. In all things, we are more than conquerors. I you know, Father, it's getting closer and closer. The moment when someone shall sing the song of Hannah to say the Lord raised the poor from the dust. The moment when someone shall say, though I was barren, now I have a child. The moment where those scars shall become crowns. Thank you, Father, as we end this service, be with us and attend to every need and every desire. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Our next service will be on Friday online. Then um, again, we'll meet on Sunday, normal times. So God bless you. Till we meet again. So um, we will sing as we dismiss. I will only see those that I have appointments with so that I, I can give much time. God bless you.